Thanks for joining us on NC Exclusive. I am Rita Omodia. And today, Zimbabwe has a long history of economic challenges, with one of the most notable being hyperinflation. In the early 2000s, Zimbabwe experienced a period of hyperinflation, with prices doubling every day and the country's currency rapidly losing value. This economic crisis is characterized by a combination of factors, including government policies, corruption, and external economic pressures. Despite efforts to stabilize the economy, Zimbabwe continues to face inflationary pressures, with prices rising rapidly and economic instability remaining a significant challenge. Joining us on NC Exclusive is a Zimbabwean politician who served as Finance Minister of Zimbabwe from 2009 to 2013. He is the current Member of Parliament for Arare East Constituency and the second Vice President of Citizens Coalition for Change. Joining us on NC Exclusive is Tendai BT. Many thanks for joining us on NC Exclusive. Good afternoon and uh, good afternoon to your listeners and viewers. Good afternoon. So, starting, Zimbabwe is a great nation, Gert. It presents a puzzle to policy experts, regional players, and other Africans. What factors contribute to the complexity and challenges faced by Zimbabwe presently? Well, the, the key primary cause of Zimbabwe's crisis is a, a leadership crisis, is a crisis of legitimacy, is a crisis uh, uh, of of um, expectation is the fact that uh, our electoral delivery system is never uh, delivered. Is the fact that our electoral uh, delivery system depends on securocrats, the selectorate, and not the electorate. So Zimbabweans have never been allowed to choose representatives of their own choice. For 44 years, we've had one party in power, namely ZANU uh, PF. Uh, by the period 2009-2013 when it was in a power sharing agreement and I served as finance minister of the country. So the primary problem of Zimbabwe is politics. The primary problem of Zimbabwe is a crisis of leadership and everything else is a symptom, is a manifestation of its Achilles heel, which is a leadership crisis about this leadership crisis and we're seeing hyperinflation currency issues land reform and agriculture and governance and policy uncertainty pivotal to the recent issues surrounding zimbabwe's economy uh, could you provide a breakdown of why these issues are crucial to the well-being of zimbabwe any country uh, functions on trust and so when you have a political breakdown there's no trust and the thing that suffers immediately is the exchange rate. So since 1997, the Zimbabwean currency has been in a free flow. On one Friday alone, 14th November 1997, the Zimbabwean currency collapsed uh, by a whopping uh, 70%. And when your currency collapses, another thing happens. Uh, inflation goes up. Inflation is a crisis of overaccumulation. Too much money chasing too few goods. In 2008, our inflation reached 500 billion percent, uh, the worst in the history of mankind, second only to Hungary in 1956. The Central Bank would print a currency, a hundred thousand trillion dollar note, which couldn't buy you two bottles of soda. Now, fast track 20 years later in 2023, we now have the highest inflation in the world, as I'm talking to you right now of around 400%. In the last two weeks alone, our currency collapsed by $1,000. The exchange rate is now one US dollar will buy you 3,000 uh, Zimbabwean uh, uh, dollars. Inflation is, is, is rampant. Unemployment is rampant. Poverty is rampant. The decay in the in infrastructure is just shocking. With great respect to the Democratic Republic of Congo, we are the port war capital of sub-Saharan Africa. So we resemble all the signs of a failed state. We resemble all the signs of a country that is going to war. In fact, some of our economic indicators are worse than that of South Sudan, that of uh, Somalia, uh, Mogadishu, Somaliland, Yegisa, or Somaliland, Djibouti. 
or Eritrea or Ethiopia, which is in the throes of a civil war. It's a disaster. A dog's breakfast, but not one in which many dogs will touch, not by a long mile. Very serious issues, Tendai, that you talk about. And you are a prominent Zimbabwean politician. And you're also a former Minister of Finance. You have been an advocate for various issues throughout your career. Notably, you have focused on measures to address hyperinflation, fiscal imbalances, debt relief, financial sustainability, the rule of law, civil liberties, and social justice. How much progress or improvement do you perceive in these areas over the years? I think the disaster for Zimbabwe, the defining disaster was the coup uh, of November 2017, because that coup has taken Zimbabwe three decades uh, you know, you know, backwards. And uh, people in Nigeria, in particular people in West Africa, have lived with coups, are living with uh, coups in places like uh, Burkina Faso, places like uh, uh, Mali, uh, Chad, and, and so forth. So coups take you uh, 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 backwards, and that is exactly what uh, has happened uh, uh, in, in, in Zimbabwe. We rank very uh, lowly on the anti-corruption uh, 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 index. We rank very lowly on the ease of doing a, a, a business index. So all the indicators rank us in crisis uh, mode. And so we need, uh, number one, an economic uh, solution. Number two, we need to fix our exchange rate. The de-dollarization experiment has failed. We have to go back to the U.S. dollar. Civil servants have to pay in U.S. dollars. So all the work that, I, that we did when I was in government uh, we, has been reversed. Uh, we reduced inflation to minus 7% between 2009 and 2013. And between that, that period, our average growth rate was 10%, the highest in the world. So... So all that work has been done. So it's important that Zimbabwe finds a political solution, which will, which is the condition sine qua non for resolving the massive political and human crisis that has taken this country way back to 1923-1930 in terms of the statistics. Uh, Tenda, I'm happy that you talked about the time where you're in office and that uh, so many things talking about political instability, uh, corruption going on. And we're seeing that uh, just recently in April, there was a four-part investigation, which was called the Gold Mafia uh, investigation. And you also asserted to all this uh, manner of corruption going on. What has been the impact uh, in Zimbabwe with this investigation? And uh, what do you think can be done to avoid such occurrences in the future? There are three countries in Africa, uh, sorry, two countries in Africa which has not done well in terms of uh, three in, uh, corruption perception Nigeria, Kenya, and South Africa. But I think that uh, Zimbabwe now tops all these uh, countries. As you know, uh, Rita, uh, Africa loses about 90 billion US dollars annually in illicit uh, financial flows. So what we lose out in terms of corruption, in terms of illicit financial flows, money laundering, is actually much more than what we get in terms of overseas development assistance and aid. Zimbabwe is, is worse. I reckon we are losing about six billion US dollars annually in, in the form of illicit financial flows. Uh, and the gold mafia documentary by Al Jazeera exposed that. We are losing about a billion US dollars in tobacco smuggling, a billion US dollars in gold alone, Another billion in, in lithium is, you might not know that uh, we've had fantastic uh, uh, lithium discoveries in our country. And lithium, as I'm talking to you right now, is selling it about US $80,000 a ton. So that's a lot of money. We are losing uh, that. Diamonds, you recall when President Mugabe was alive, President Mugabe acknowledging that in a short period of four years, Zimbabwe lost 15 billion US dollars. A worth of diamonds. I was finance minister. I think we lost the, more than that. So Zimbabwe is suffering from the Dutch disease, a resource case where we are extremely rich. We've got we've got sixty four minerals, and we've got five minerals that are of world class standards, namely gold, lithium, a, 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 a platinum, a chrome, gold, and, and diamonds. But we have nothing to show for that. Seventy nine percent of our people are living in extreme a, a, a poverty. And we've spent 44 years fighting amongst ourselves, 
not developing uh, ourselves, and it's a disaster. Just to give you one touching statistics, in 1980, the Zimbabwean economy was the same as Kenya. GDP was $7 billion. Fast track to 2023, Kenyan GDP is $264 billion, and Zimbabwean GDP is $18 billion. So you can see how independence is totally undervalued and de-developed in Zimbabwe because of corruption, because of theft, because of crypto cryptomania, and because of arbitrage, rent-seeking behavior, and extractive policies. And that there's been a lot of fight for this economic emancipation. And in February 2022, you were detained by police for several hours while campaigning Narare. Uh, could you provide a detailed account of the experience and the circumstances surrounding it? Just come again. I missed that. And so we're talking about your detention in February 2022. You've been very vocal about the political and economic yeah. emancipation in uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, can you explain to us and give us a detailed account of this experience that you had? Well, I've been arrested uh, countless of times, including, uh, 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 as you mentioned, February uh, of 2022. I've been arrested on, on treason at, at twice. I've, I've been, I've spent months in our our our, our notorious uh, uh, jails, and right now I'm going through a persecution. Uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, again. Uh, so it's 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 the problem of Zimbabwe that the, it weaponizes those that it weaponizes the law in those that have different uh, uh, you know, opinions. The political party that I belong to, uh, all the leaders are facing uh, criminal uh, charges. Uh, Job Scala, one of our senior leaders, has been uh, in, in detention since June 14 of, of last year over extremely flimsy charges. Uh, one of uh, the political leaders of our country, Jacob Ngarufume, was only last week jailed for four years uh, for simply exercising his right to call for a peaceful a demonstration in, in, in Zimbabwe. But you know from the experience of Africa's decolonization that imprisoning a different political opinion, arresting different political opinion, mm. uh, uh, assassinating different political opinion uh, doesn't work. Uh, that is why, uh, you know, uh, Af Africa, uh, Africa has got success stories. Uh, Nelson Mandela was in prison for, for 27 years. Uh, that didn't stop the wheels of, uh, of, 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 of change. All the nationalist leaders from Kenneth Kawunda, Malim, Julius Nyerere spent a long period of time in detention, there's, including our own Robert Mugabe. That didn't change anything, and it won't change anything. There has definitely been a lot of fight for this economic emancipation, and we'll continue to hear stories and reports of what is going on in Zimbabwe as we look forward to the elections. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on NC Exclusive. It's been an absolute pleasure discussing Zimbabwe's economic strides and the robust discussion on measures to address hyperinflation, fiscal imbalances, and financial sustainability in Zimbabwe. Thank you once again, Tendai. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Thank you.